Hi, you guys. Welcome back for our daily practice questions. As always, you know I like to get into my introduction and disclaimer before getting started with our questions for today. So for those of you who are familiar with me, hey, y'all. For those of you who are new here, welcome, 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 you guys. I'm Dr. Brittany Weinstock. I am a family nurse practitioner, and I'm the founder and CEO of The Nursing Studio. I provide resources, tools, review courses, review books, one-on-one sessions, and more to assist nurses as well as nurse practitioners with success on their boards as well as in practice. And I've been doing this since 2015, assisting nurses and nurse practitioners internationally with exam success, and I would love to work with you as well. But y'all know I always like to give you this disclaimer and reminder before getting started. We know there's no absolutes in medicine. We treat on a patient-by-patient basis. So any of the questions that you see here, know that I have designed these and created these based off of what is currently being tested on the ANCC as well as AAMP exam, okay? Now, any of my videos, when I'm teaching you guys on things that we currently do in practice, I will always say that so there's no confusion. So with that being said, let's get into our questions for today. And real quick, before we get started, you know, um, by now you probably have seen it all over, but I am doing my practice question course July 13th from 10 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. I have it for the low cost of $49. Trying to give back to you guys. Y'all reached out, asked about it. I haven't done this practice question course. I used to do it in the past. Somebody asked me to bring it back. So here it is. Thank me later. So what does this include? I will be doing the exam breakdown for the ANCC, AAMP for each exam type. So you will know and understand what you're really, you know, um, getting into, what to expect, the percentages in each area. We'll walk through and talk through that live. I'll walk through um, practice questions live with you as well so that you're able to answer and engage and we can kind of talk through those with you. I do have a 20 student limit on this class for that very reason so that if you're getting stuck on something we can kind of talk through that in the chat to make sure you're getting what I'm saying because I will be doing a few from each um, system so that y'all can gauge and get an understanding. Sidebar because I have received a lot of questions about this people are asking will you get to review the questions um, later and so you will not have the live portion but everything that i go over i provide to you so you will have the questions to keep and review so that is um a part of it so if that was a question that you're um, wondering yes you will have those questions i will be sending that stuff out to you um also, I will be discussing how to walk through and break down each of the question types, and I'll be providing test taking tips. And then at the end, we'll also have a mini Q&A session um, for you to ask any questions that you need answered, and we'll go from there, okay? So if you are looking to join, um, I look forward to working with you guys. We're a couple of weeks out for it, but uh, grab your spot. There's only 20 available. And then I have one surprise thing coming up that... Uh, one of my past review students uh, have done. So I'll keep you guys updated on that uh, this weekend. All right, you guys, let's get into question number one. Question number one states, a patient presents to the office for follow-up. The patient denies any complaints at this time. Upon examination, the nurse practitioner notes a diastolic murmur at the second intercostal space. Based on these findings, how should the nurse practitioner diagnose? Is it A, aortic stenosis, B, aortic regurgitation, C, mitral stenosis, or D, mitral regurgitation. Take a moment and tell me what you got, you guys. All right, you know, I always recommend reading the stem of the question first, so it allows you to slow down to make sure you're answering what is being asked of you. So here the stem of the question states, based on these findings, how should the nurse practitioner diagnose? You know what I always tell you. And when you sit down to that test, I want you to hear me say, if it's asking you to diagnose, I want you to run it back and see what the assessment findings are. If it's asking you to treat, you know, you run it back. You, you know the steps. You know the drill by now. And so what are we diagnosing? We're talking about murmurs here, right? So this patient came in. They're denying any complaints. It's just a follow-up. But on exam, the nurse practitioner has noted a diastolic murmur at the second intercostal space. So y'all pay attention to the key identifiers. Y'all know when I talk murmurs, I always tell y'all first. And, and y'all know I know all the details and there's so much more to all the things that we do. Cardiology is my background. I know. But I'm trying to help you to quickly assess and get these questions correct as well as identify patients in practice, okay? So first, you need to know diastolic, systolic versus diastolic, right? Because on these exams, they're going to tell you one versus the other. 
So if it's asking you about murmurs, don't just skim across this and eliminate that. Look for that in the question, okay? I just had that discussion with somebody in a one-on-one session um, this week. And so I'm just making sure that I'm telling y'all to pinpoint that, right? So here it's telling you it is a diastolic murmur. So then you stop and say, all right, what are my diastolic murmurs? Now, you know, Brittany's brilliance with my murmurs, but you guys, I always say there's so many mnemonics for murmurs. Do whichever one you know and stick with that one, okay? Don't try to learn them all and confuse yourself. Stick with the one you know. Brittany's brilliance says sassy systolic. The sassy systolic crew says men really are stupid. Mitral regurge, aortic stenosis, and then diastolic are the opposite. So that means diastolic would be what? Mitral stenosis and aortic regurgitation, right? So that means B and C are all that we have left to choose from here, right? Now they say that the murmur is at the second intercostal space. You know, that's the next thing I tell you to know. Know the location. So what is at second intercostal space? Aortic, right? A comes before M. Aortic is at the second intercostal space. Mitral is at the fifth intercostal space, right? Two and five. A and M, right? So if B and C are our ones that we have left to choose from because those are our diastolic murmurs, then our answer is what? aortic regurgitation right b and i know some of you are like girl we know we got it but for those of you who get tripped up on this i wanted to slow it down one more time for you guys okay all right so b is your best answer answer <laughs> aortic regurgitation question number two a patient presents to the office with complaints of pain to the right upper quadrant of the abdomen he states that he has been nauseated for the past couple of days what will be the best test for the nurse practitioner to complete to further assess this patient to obtain a diagnosis? Is it A, SOA sign, B, Murphy sign, C, Cullen sign, or D, obturator sign? Take a moment and tell me what you got, you guys. All right, so the stimulus question here states, what would be the best test for the nurse practitioner to complete to further assess this patient to obtain a diagnosis. So that's a lot. And I did it on purpose because you know this test and these tests will give you a wordy, fluffy scenario that you feel like you need to take it back to childhood and run your finger under each line to make sure you're even understanding what the question is asking. But this stem is just simply saying, what test do we need to do to confirm the diagnosis that we think, right? So here, this patient came in, they have right upper quadrant pain, they're nauseated. What is the thing that you need to think of instantly? You know, that's one of my sayings. When I say this, you say that. So if I say right upper quadrant pain, you should think cholecystitis, right? Right? So then what test do we do to confirm a diagnosis, a differential diagnosis of cholecystitis? Your answer is B, Murphy sign, right? We do the Murphy sign for cholecystitis. So B, Murphy sign. And then lastly, question number three, a patient presents to the office today with complaints of a green discharge. Upon examination, there's noted cervical motion tenderness. The nurse practitioner is explaining to the MP student the test that should be completed for further assessment. What test should the nurse practitioner instruct the MP student on? All right, is it A, a urinalysis, B, NAT, in AAT, C, ultrasound, or D, a cervical cytology. Take a moment and tell me what you got, you guys. And so here's them the question, what test should the nurse practitioner instruct the MP student on? So this patient has come into the office. They're having a green discharge. Uh, on exam, cervical motion tenderness is noted. And so the MP is explaining to the MP student the best test that we do, we start to see this presentation. And so when you hear green discharge, cervical motion tenderness, first off, when you hear cervical motion tenderness, two things should come to mind, gonorrhea and chlamydia, right? When you hear that green discharge, GG, right? Green discharge, gonorrhea, right? So we're trying to see what's going on. So the best test that we do, the initial test is that B, N. AAT, NAT. NAT is that first line test that you should be completing for that um, those STIs, especially top of the line, chlamydia and gonorrhea, okay? All right, you guys, I hope you found this helpful. 
if you are struggling with anything and want me to cover some topics, please reach out to me, put it in the comments. I'm happy to do questions on those. But y'all know what to do. Make sure y'all meet me here. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and share with whomever you may think may find this beneficial as well. And meet me back. And if you need any of the resources that I offer, feel free to reach out to the nursing studio. Give us a call at 803-400-6864. Or you can shoot a text message to this number. Or shoot us an email at the nursing studio, the number one at gmail.com. Things that we offer. I have a review book, ebook, as well as paperback option. Both are linked in the bio of this channel. It is broken down by system. There's images. It is broken down with an interactive section per system as well. It is fill in the blank based on how I teach y'all assessment, diagnosis, evaluation, and treatment, as well as there are practice questions in the back with rationales to complete as well. If you get the ebook option, it is available instantly once you purchase on all of your devices. Okay. Um, next is the independent self-paced review course where it is designed for family and adult GERO for both exams, the ANCC as well as AAMP exam. Um, broken down by systems, images on this, non-clinical content, as well as some mini quizzes included. There are videos you can watch as many times you want. That's for you to study on the go on your own. And that is also linked in the bio um, of this channel as well. I also offer strictly a non-clinical review. Um, I do one-on-one -on -one sessions. You know, we do a five-week group review, which we are in week three right now. So just be on the lookout on the next up and coming five-week review. The next one will probably be around September, but I'll keep you updated. And then, uh, you know, we like I mentioned earlier, we have our practice question course coming up July 13th. That link is in the description as well as in the comments of this video. And then if you want any of the one-on-one -on -one sessions, I always tell you just reach out so that we can gauge what you truly need. They come in three different tier options. If there's a particular weakness that you have, we work through those. Um, if you are just wanting to see if you're ready, we do exam readiness assessments. And then lastly is the custom package where I provide you with a pretest, ga gauge your weakness. We design a study schedule based off of how long you're looking to study. I work alongside with you during that time frame, and then we make sure that you are strengthened and prepared so that you can be successful on boards, okay? So if you need any of those resources, like I said, feel free to give us a call or shoot us an email, but make sure y'all meet me back here. All right, happy studying, you guys. Bye.